In this video, I want to discuss validation and verification. These are very two different terms and it's important that we don't get these mixed up on our exams. Let's start by looking at validation first. So what is validation? Well, validation is an automatic computer check at the point of data entry. Validation aims to ensure that only sensible and reasonable data is entered into the system. Validation does not check the accuracy of the data being entered. And that's something really important to remember. And we're gonna come back to that in a short while. So why use validation? Well, in programming, it's important that you include validation for your data inputs. Validation stops unexpected or abnormal data from crashing your program and prevents you from receiving impossible garbage outputs. Basically, it's easier to try and prevent poor data entries at the point of entry rather than trying to fix them later on. I would say it's always safest to assume that everybody using your system is an idiot and make sure basically your program is idiot proof. That way, there's no nasty surprises later on. There's no unusable data in your system, hopefully, later on. So as an example of that, let's say you have a restaurant and you've got an online booking system and you don't have validation on some of those data inputs. Let's say someone's trying to make a reservation and they don't leave any contact information. It's going to be impossible for you to contact that person back later on when you go for your bookings to confirm or to decline that restaurant booking if they've not left any contact information. It needs to be done at the point of data entry. That's something that can't be fixed later on. Another example, again, with the restaurant booking, is maybe that they have left their contact details, but they've forgotten to say what date or what time they want to book the meal for. In this situation, you could contact the customer back and fix that error, but that's a lot of hassle on the part of everybody when that could have been resolved with validation right at the start when they um, entered their information in the online form. So typical example here, let's say we have a computer system and the instructions quite clear, enter an integer, so a whole number between one and 10. If you look inside these yellow brackets on the screen, you can see a whole range of responses that people could put. You might think, well, surely people aren't that stupid. Well, people are stupid and you should always expect stupid answers when you have a system and it's your job really to try and preempt people's stupidity with validation and make sure that the information is as sensible and as feasible as possible right at the start to avoid issues later on. So integers between one and 10, you know, number five, that's great. That's the kind of answer we would expect, but someone might enter that as words or as a sentence of a number five. Someone might enter 5.7, well, that's not an integer. So I might enter the number 11, but well, that's not between one and 10. So there's all sorts of crazy responses you could expect on a system. And with validation, we're trying to nip those daft responses in the bud, trying to make sure that the information we get is at least feasible um, and a possible expected answer. Now I mentioned earlier on that validation does not check the accuracy of the data entered. That's really important, you must remember that. Validation cannot force someone to enter correct information. It just tries to make sure that the data that's entered is as sensible, as realistic, as feasible as possible. Let's look at some examples here about that. So let's look at gender, first of all. I can validate an online form to make sure people enter M for male and F for female, but I can't make sure they actually enter the correct gender. Maybe you've got... Um, a name like Charlie and someone's entering your details on your behalf and they see the name Charlie and they assume it's a, a male name when actually it's a female name. So there's no guarantee you're gonna pick the right gender, but at least it is a gender with validation. You know, we can't enter something random. If we look at postcodes, we can do validation rules on postcodes to ensure that a postcode which is entered follows the expected pattern of a postcode. For example, letter, letter, number, number. We can enforce that pattern with validation, but that doesn't mean that the person has entered the correct postcode. 
For example, they could enter the postcode for their previous address and forget that they've moved house. So that is a valid postcode, but it's not the correct postcode that they currently live in. Therefore, the data is inaccurate, even though it is sensible. It does match what a postcode should look like. It's the same with emails, an email address. We can ensure that an email address matches the pattern of an email. We can validate it to make sure this looks like an email, but that doesn't stop them doing a typo and entering their email address incorrectly. If we look at test scores, maybe we're validating for a score between 0 and 100 for a test, and our system will make sure that those scores fall between 0 and 100, that's fine, but that doesn't stop you by accident entering the wrong test score. Maybe just a slip on the keyboard or you've misread it on the piece of paper, you may still enter the wrong test score. doesn't mean it's accurate, but at least we know it's a sensible, feasible test score between the ranges that are acceptable. And finally, for example, required fields. You may have a form, a data entry form, and we've set that, we've validated it to be required. You have to enter some information. That's fine, but that doesn't mean what they've entered is actually meaningful and accurate. Okay, so validation is a great tool to ensure that the information is feasible, sensible, but validation can't physically force people to enter the information that is actually correct in these situations. So let's take a look at some methods of validation that we can use, methods that you need to know. The first method is called a range check. A range check checks that the data entered falls between an acceptable upper and lower value within a set range of values. You could do a range check for a number entry. You can have a range check for a date entry. For example, to join a certain group or to be entered into a certain um, system, maybe your date of birth has to fall between a certain range of values. Otherwise, your age wouldn't be the correct age to be allowed to take part. Or as I said earlier, maybe it's um, some score, some a test, and you want to make sure that, that score is a score that is technically possible, not a score that's impossible. If your test is out of 100, then a score of 200 is certainly not possible. The next type of validation is a type check. A type check checks that the data entered is of an expected type. For example, are we expecting numbers to be entered here? Are we expecting text? A length check checks that the amount of characters entered meets the expectations. You'll see this quite often when it comes to passwords. If for security reasons we want a long password, let's say an eight character password, we can do a length check on that to ensure that what they've entered is at least eight characters long. A presence check, you probably come across quite a lot online. This ensures that the user has entered at least something into the field, into the input box. It stops them from accidentally entering nothing. Okay, maybe you're filling out an online form and you've skipped past the box, a field, without realizing it. This will force you to go back and at least enter something as a value into the box. And finally, we've got check digits. A check digit, as you may know, is an extra digit added to the end of a number, and it's calculated from the numbers before it. So it's very unlikely that you could um, have entered the digits incorrectly and have came up with the same check digit. OK, let's look at verification next. Verification, completely different to validation, so let's see what that is. So verification is a way of preventing errors when data is copied from one medium to another. Okay, one medium to another. Verification does not check if the data makes sense or is within acceptable boundaries. Verification only checks that the data entered is identical to the original source. We're looking for the data to match one medium to another. That medium could be something you're thinking of in your head and the medium is going from your head to the computer system, or it could be from a piece of paper, a data collection form, from a data collection form into the computer. So one place to another, one medium to another. We want to make sure that that is copied across and it matches. There's only two methods of verification that you need to remember. Okay, we've got double entry and visual checks. So double entry is when data is entered twice and the computer checks that they match up. You probably use this quite a lot 
especially if let's say you've changed your password on an online system you're required to enter your password twice this is to make sure that what you're thinking of in your head um, matches what you've typed into the computer and if you've typed it in twice into the computer and it matches up then there's a very good chance that what is going from on in your head has correctly left your head through your hands and entered the computer um, as you intended you haven't accidentally typed a different key okay uh, same with email addresses when you're asked to submit your email address sometimes you're asked to enter it twice that's to make sure again that what you're entering in is copied from one medium you to the other medium the computer if you've done it twice and it matches then the chances are that you've done it correctly as in what was in your head and is, is now correctly in the computer the odds of making the same mistake twice with your email address is slim okay you could do double entry on extreme examples but i wouldn't recommend it you know, let's say you've got a whole essay 2000 word essay on a piece of paper and you need to copy it in completely accurately you could type that whole essay in twice and if it matches you've copied it from the piece of paper to the computer perfectly it's not something you'd, you'd want to do but that would be an example of double entry as well if you've copied that whole essay in twice and it matches then it's a pretty good chance you've copied it from the piece of paper um, correctly and correctly is in the sense that it matches the piece of paper doesn't mean your essay is actually right and the final method is a visual check so the user manually reads and compares the newly inputted data against the original source to ensure that they match this is something you may have come across and not even realize that you're performing a visual check that you're doing some verification so for me personally let's say i'm transferring money from one place to another really paranoid i may get my um, phone out my online banking and i have got someone's details on a post-it note and i'm typing in their account number and their sort code and i will check the post-it note against the phone over and over again to make sure that what's on the post-it note matches what's on my phone screen before i then send the money so that's verification i'm checking that i've copied from one medium the post-it note the piece of paper to the other medium which is the phone and i'm checking it matches up so it's a visual check and a lot of us will do this when we're entering into a computer without even realizing that's what we're doing it's a common sense thing to do so that's verification okay so validation and verification two different things make sure we understand the methods of that validation is making sure that information is as sensible and feasible as possible at the point of data entry we want to make sure we're trying to reduce the chance of hiccups and issues later on with that information and verification is to make sure that when information is copied from one medium to another that it matches up 